Um, but um, just uh, felt appropriate this morning to, to share it a little bit with you. Uh, the, um, one of our general superintendents of the Church of Nazarene I went through a situation where his uh, uh, child had uh, uh, succumbed to cancer. And they had prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed, and finally the, baby, uh, the young uh, uh, child had passed away. And um, him and his wife were going through a tough time. You ever been through tough times? <laughs> you know, I, uh, I would love to stand up here and tell you that believing in Jesus, you would never go through a tough time. And let me tell you, that's not true. That's, that's not true. Um, if, if Christ heals every time we uh, pray, then none of us would ever die. I, I, I want you to know for sure that God is a healing God. He does give us wealth at times. <laughs> he does do all kinds of amazing miracles. But there are sometimes we go through things that we don't understand. And let me tell you something. Your faith and the faithfulness of God is not dependent upon whether you're wealthy or you're healthy or everybody around you does, jumps when you want them to. <laughs> whether, whether every pastor around you is faithful. Folks, there are people who have spiritual scar tissue and have turned God into the faithfulness of other people and have flushed God out when God is still a faithful God. It's just people around you aren't always faithful. Situations aren't always the way we like. And, and so the answer to uh, why... Uh, there's another pastor here this morning. Have you, and you don't have to answer if you don't want to. But have you ever been asked why bad things happen to good people? <laughs> oh, never! <laughs> It's a question that we have, you know, why? If, if God loved us, why does this happen? And I have, have a, uh, uh, a daughter that's uh, kind of going through a situation right now where I, I, uh, a friend, and I'm, I don't know the whole story, so I can just uh, share little bits of it, but the friend uh, uh, had a pregnancy and, and uh, uh, was wanting a child real bad and found out the baby had Down syndrome. And then ultimately, after all the suffering and all the pain, the, the baby died. The question is why? And that's a really tough question, especially when you're dealing with children with their whole life in front of them, and then all of a sudden you look at these situations and you say, why, God? Well, this general superintendent just absolutely couldn't get a grip of it. It was hard. Head of the, one of the heads of the Church of the Nazarene had been through all the ranks, had been a pastor for years, had done and and seen miracles and had held the hands of people who had lost loved ones. And now it's hitting home. <laughs> it's right on his doorstep. And he's getting all these letters. And his wife sits there and was looking at the letters and took about three or four letters in a row that said, his grace is sufficient, his grace is sufficient, until she finally screamed out, it's not sufficient! Quit telling me His grace is sufficient. It hurts. And I don't know how to handle this. I'm angry at God because He took my little baby. And he, she died. Or he died. I can't remember the gender. doesn't matter to the point that this child was gone. He said he went over and was sitting trying to get some solitude and he was overlooking Boston Harbor. And he looked... And he's seen these beautiful sail boats going through. And then he looked down there, and there's a little guy in a little rowboat. Had about two or three inches of freeboard. And was barely making it along. And it looked like every time he would row, he'd go back half. Uh, and he would go forward, and it, it, still the wind was kept blowing him backward. Finally, he made it to shore. And God touched him on the shoulder, and he says, it's not the big sailboat that you're going to sail into heaven sometimes. It's that little dinghy. <laughs> and you're going to make it by the skin of your teeth. But it's God who is a buoyancy, and he's holding the hole, his finger in the hole in the bottom of the boat, and you'll make it to shore just by the skin of your chinny-chin-chin. Chin. But I'll get you through. 
And he said it's the only thing that held him together during that hard time, knowing that he didn't have to go through like a big scooter or whatever with a big huge sails and a beautiful yacht. That's not how he was going to make it through this. It was going to be by the chin of his, the skin of his chinny chin chin. He was going to barely make it. But he was going to get through by the grace of God. I was driving through um, two weeks ago. I was driving through Utah. Uh, kind of, somebody who was from Arizona. Yeah. And, uh, and Colorado. You, you, you know the... Uh, formations that uh, are, are out there. Um, we were driving from, um, well, let's, well, it was Navajo country. It was down by um, uh, Holbrook, Arizona, coming up through Utah the long way, just right through the middle. I went through Arches National, uh, National Park area, and uh, we, um, we came across the formation that was just sitting out in the middle of a field. Got a picture of that. There you go. I don't, yeah, my, not much of a field, but there is nothing around this. It's just sitting right out in the middle of nowhere. And it's like, wow. And as Jerry was driving as we went through, and as, uh, as I was looking over there, I grabbed the camera and took a picture, and something, something said to me, and it was like, you know, this, this uh, object doesn't have a spirit or anything. But, but it was like it was speaking to me, you know. And it, 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 these are the words that kind of came to me. I just decided not to let things destroy me. And in so doing, I became beautiful. Think about that for a second. Every other formation around it had crumbled long since. And the wind and the rain and how many earthquakes, I have no idea. But this thing had something within it that was stronger than that around it. Christ in you, the hope of glory. Folks, we're going to wither and we're going to fall apart from the sand, the wind, and the, and the rains, and all the turmoil around us, and we're going to just fall to pieces. And there are some Christians that have fallen by the wayside of situations and have given up their faith and just have no desire to follow God anymore. Because but there's something within some Christians that stand up and it holds together. It's called walking in the Spirit. Remember we talked about that last Sunday? It's walking in the Spirit and not in the flesh. In the flesh we crumble. Everything around us and everything. But there's something within some individuals that causes them to stand firm and the battles around them just take all the dross away and read feel the inner beauty. Doesn't that almost look like a cathedral? It's a temple. The Bible says we're the temple of the Holy Spirit. Wouldn't it be nice if every one of us would turn into one of those? Hey, we've got this treasure in earthen vessels. We have this treasure in earthen vessels so that the excellency of the power would be of God and not of us. It is something with strong within that peace that has kept it from crumbling. You and I have been through situations. Have you ever been hurt in a church? Have you ever been hurt? Churches have a tendency to hurt people. I call it spiritual scar tissue. Have you been hurt? Have you made up your mind, I'll never go to church again because somebody hurt me? If you allow that to crumble your relationship with God and your walk with the Spirit and your walking in the light as He is in the light, you will not have the fellowship and the blood of Jesus Christ will not cleanse you from all unrighteousness. The blood of Jesus wants to purify you and make you into something beautiful. 
Count it joy, it says in James, when you fall into different kinds of temptations. And then it goes on to say, so that you can be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. God makes beautiful things out of situations that are really tough. You know, there's a phenomenon going on, and I was talking to Clinton Gale a little bit about it. There's a phenomenon going around in our country, and we're, we're hearing that people are just too clean, and their immune system hasn't been challenged enough. There's a book out that says, Eat Dirt and Be Healthy. Well, I wouldn't recommend eating dirt and being healthy, but I have to tell you, your immune system builds up and it be it strength. The trees on the top of the mountain have deeper roots and they live stronger. The oldest tree ever to live, it was called Methuselah, and it was a, some kind of a bristlecone pine or something like that down in over 4,000 years old. That's an old tree. General Sherman is a tree in the uh, uh, forest down in uh, uh, the Sequoia National Park. As they call him General Sherman. It's just this huge tree. It's actually the biggest tree in, in the world. It's, it's the largest tree. And uh, General Sherman, figure he's about 2,000 years old. Gary and I found out something when we were going through uh, uh, Bryce Canyon that a lot of the pines that are around that canyon are there because they have an insulating factor around them. and The bark is a natural insulation. General Sh Sherman has been through a lot of forest fires and they haven't destroyed him. Isn't that good? Let me tell you, there's a lot of things. Our immune system Scar tissue, when you get cut, it prevents you from getting hurt in that same spot again. And it gets a little, sometimes that scar tissue, be careful. Spiritual scar, scar tissue will make you immobile spiritually too if you aren't careful. You've got to let the salve of the great physician. There's a balm in Gilead that can help that salve and put it on that scar and cause it to soften and not be so firm. Have you ever heard of fairer weather Christianity? Well, if you have, I haven't. <laughs> it's something I'm kind of coining. But it is a fair weather Christianity, and maybe there is a term uh, like it, but Fair weather Christianity is what I would define as people that believe you're Christian when everything goes right. Fair weather I ask a Sunday school class of mine, I said, What do you want to study? And so I made a whole list of things. And some of it was uh, 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 family relationships and dealing with all the different things. And I, it, was, it was a young adult class, and so I wanted to cover a multitude of different things. And I, I wanted to come to a, a, a zero in the list. So instead of uh, nine, I wanted 10, or instead of 10, I wanted 20, or uh, instead of 19, I wanted 20. So I. I added one little thing on the list. Do you want to study? And what, the one thing I put on there is spiritual anemia. And that got more votes <laughs> that I have to, had to figure out. What does spiritual anemia mean? <laughs> Everybody wanted to study. Spiritual anemia. There was a song that we uh, used to sing, and it um, kind of went like this: "It's more than I wish. It's more than I wish. More than a daydream. More than just a passing whim. Yes, I've said this all before a thousand times and more. 
I don't want to waste my life in chains of sin. I don't want to be, I don't want to be a casual Christian. I don't want to live, I don't want to live a lukewarm life. But I want to light up the night. I want to stand up. I want to shine out for Jesus. I want the inner strength of me to be something that others can see. I want my light to light up the night with an everlasting life. I don't want to live a casual Christian life. This life is filled with strong distractions, with upholds from the left and from the right. I've already made up my mind, going to live this world behind, uh, leave this world behind, going to live a life, a living sacrifice. I don't want to be, I don't want to be a casual Christian. I've just decided I'm not going to let things around me destroy me. I've just decided that I'm not going to let the financial trouble kill me. I've just decided that that pastor that failed isn't going to disrupt my Christian life. I've just decided that I'm going to stand for God and allow the Holy Spirit to be the sustenance within me that makes me beautiful. It's going to be me, not or God, not me. <laughs> and I'm going to let the wind take away everything else that makes me ugly, and I'm going to become beautiful. Let's go to the next slide. Isn't that something? Little Levi stood there and looked into that canyon. He goes, wow. Little four-year-old boy. Couldn't imagine. Look at all these little individual pillars. You know what that is? It's beauty from decay. It's beauty from wind. It's beauty from, could be fire. It's beauty from anything that the elements can throw at it. And it's decided, I'm going to let that shape me into something beautiful. The next slide. The wind, the rain, the erosion. We knew we were getting closer to the arches because we could see these little half moons in the sides of the hills. And we could say, you know, that's a kind of rock formation. It's, it looks like an arch is going to be there. All of a sudden, we've seen a beautiful arch. You see, they're holding together not because they're special, but they're holding together because there's a strength within them. God wants us to have that strength. I am crucified with Christ, yet I live. It's no longer I, but Christ living in me. The life that I live in the body, I live by the faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. I have a strength and a sustenance within me that causes me to Stand and be more than conqueror through Christ Jesus. You've got to know that, folks. You have to know that every person around you is going to fail, and sometimes you're standing alone in your family, and you're the only one that says, I will not bow, I will not bend, I will not turn my back away from God. And as Job said, though he slay me, yet will I serve him. Those are the people that stand up in their family and they're beautiful. Did you know Jesus went through that? Do you know Jesus went through that? Yeah, he, he looked around and all the disciples were leaving him. And he turned to uh, Peter and says, Are you going to go too? He said, Where do we go? You alone have the strength and eternal life. Well, that was good to, for Peter to say that. But did you know on the night beautiful picture of the Lord's Supper one walked out of that supper now he was standing there with just a few. Then he went out to pray and the flesh got a whole bunch more. He says the spirit is willing Flesh is weak. They all quit praying but him. And he was all alone. 
And he went to him. Can't you watch fruit with me for a little while? I'm lonely. I'm standing here all by myself. Went to the garden, and then all of a sudden he was betrayed by a kiss. I'm telling you this because I believe most of us know, without me going into a whole background, know the story very well. But he's betrayed by a kiss and Judas. And then Peter started denying him. And the Bible says that Peter looked up and Jesus looked at him. We think about Peter's failure and how hard that made Peter feel. Think of what it did to Christ. Alone. As he hung on the cross, the Bible tells, him, tells us that his disciples all fled. Looks like maybe John and then his father. Last scream. My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? The greatest monument we have to someone who stood alone was Jesus Christ. Let me tell you, that monument stands today as your and my worst nightmare. No. It's our hope of glory. There's an old, old-fashioned song. Why did you think that pastor would have an old, old-fashioned song? This was only written by William Barthurst somewhere in the 1800s. And it says, Oh, for a faith that will not shrink, though pressed by every foe, that will not tremble on the brink of any earthly woe, that will not murmur nor complain beneath the chastening rod, but in the hour of grief or pain will lean upon its God. A faith that shines more bright and clear when tempests rage without, that when in danger knows no fear, in darkness feels no doubt. Lord, give me such a faith as this, and then whate'er may come, I'll taste even here the hallowed bliss of an eternal home. Christ in you, the hope of glory. The Holy Spirit within you being that strength when no, everything else around you fails. Have you been through tough times? Have you shook your fist at God and said, hey, God, I'll never trust you again? Folks, God has not promised guys always blue. Our flower strewn pathways all our life through. But he has promised strength for the day, help for the weary, light on the way. He has promised us to be that that keeps us buoyant. You and I can be ugly. I can't think of something more ugly than that cross. It's a sign of shame and reproach and pain and suffering. Bryce Canyon doesn't stand, uh, hold a candle to that. And there's a lot of suffering that went on in Bryce Canyon. A lot of decay, a lot of breaking down. But the most beautiful thing is that the cross of Christ outshines it all. Let me promise you one thing. Those footprints in the sand never once will you ever walk alone. There, 
There is a buoyancy within you. There is a strength within you. There has no temptation taken you, but such is his common demand. But God is faithful, who will not allow you to be tempted above that you are able, but will with that temptation put a strength within you. Having done all, the Bible says, stand. With the armor of God, stand. You know, what we need more than anything else in this world is Christians that have learned to stand no matter what happens. Have you made up your mind, I'm going to be what God wants me to be? Come, I'm going to say it, hell or high water. I don't care what happens. I'm going to stand for Jesus. I want to be what God wants me to be, and I'm going to stand, and let me tell you, you will become a beautiful saint. You will be one that will stand up, and people will look, whoa. Our church needs to be that lighthouse. You say, why aren't we bigger than this? I'll tell you what. When Satan comes in with a flood, and we're going through a little downtime right now, guys. <laughs> I lost Jacob and Brandy, and there's few, you know, we're aching a little bit. You know what can happen right now? God can bring our inner beauty out and make us beautiful. In fact, I've seen it start happening. I've never seen more unity in this church than I see right now. There's some beauty coming out in us because we're willing to stand. We got that song. Let's sing it. And you, you, if you don't know it, you need to learn it. If you do know it, sing it with us, okay? Let's stand and, uh, and we'll sing that song. I know the Bergmans are wanting a uh, potluck real quick. Standing on this mountain top, looking just how far we've come. Knowing that for every step you were with us, kneeling on this battle ground, seeing just how much you've done, knowing every victory is your heart in us. Stars and struggles on the way, flood with joy, our hearts can say, Yes, our hearts. Thank you. 
Thank you. 